It's always good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Yes. Say, I am the house. <laughs> That's right. You are the house of the Lord. Amen. You and I both are. Well, uh, man, great to see you. We love you. Pastor Justin Annette. He texted me in the middle or right before the first, I don't know if it was in the middle. It had to be in the middle because I was preaching and he quoted something that I preached. So he texted me in the middle of service and just wanted to tell you he loves you. He's praying for you. They're excited about what God's doing. They will be back with us next Sunday. So uh, we're excited about that as well. Amen. He'll continue to minister on the area of synergy. All right. So um, if you have your Bibles, you can turn to Deuteronomy. It's where we're going to start off this morning. Deuteronomy 30, 14 through 15 and then 19 to 20. I want to pray over this just to give you a heads up. I started uh, preaching this morning on a book that the Lord's placed on the inside of me over the last year and a half that uh, earlier this week when we were, I was praying about what he would desire for me to minister this morning. And he said, I want you, cause I'll be preaching today and then I'll be preaching the first week in January. And uh, he said, over these next four times that you minister, I want you to preach out of the book. And so that uh, you can, uh, it's going to help catapult that. My goal is to have that published by next summer. So you will have that in your hands. Next summer will actually mark 30 years in ministry for me. So I know the Savelles, we're going to be celebrating 50, but uh, it's, a, it's a very important part of my life. And I'm excited about it. And so um, let's pray and we'll dive into this together. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we love you. We bless you. We thank you for your word that will not return void. I thank you for miracle signs and wonders already being confirmed of what you're speaking. I thank you, Father, that uh, we are walking in divine health, wealth, and prosperity, Lord, that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. I pray that you speak to my vocal cords, think to my mind, utter this message exactly the way that you desire for it to be mes- uh, ministered this morning, Lord. I-, I love you, Lord. I thank you for never leaving me nor forsaking me. I thank you, Lord, for always being right here with me every time I open my mouth to say whatever it is that you're telling me to say. And I ask you to make yourself big uh, this morning in all of our lives as we, we dive into your word and allow your presence to be, uh, to be ministered to all of us this morning, Lord. I take it. I receive it. Uh, I just thank you for it in advance. I remind the devil he's under our feet. He can't come near our dwelling place. And uh, we bless you, Father, for a perfect service. In Jesus' name, everybody said? Amen. Amen. All right. So if you're taking notes, you can take notes. Uh, if you want to go back, I'm not going to preach what I preached in the first uh, a session this morning, uh, but uh, the name of the book is called The Perfect Day, dot, 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 The Perfect Life. The Perfect Day, dot, 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 The Perfect Life. As, uh, as you know, you have the opportunity in life, you learn a lot of things along the way, and everything that you learn is uh, usually from somebody else. And so in the process of this book, a lot of it is different uh, men of God that have sowed into my life or women of God that have sowed into my life that have brought revelation and knowledge. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, the word of God that's preached. So people help will make deposits. It's one thing to read the word. The word is true, but faith comes by hearing, hearing and hearing by the word of God. So I believe that God makes direct deposits in their life from the people that God puts into our life in order for us to receive all that he has for us. So the title of the book is The Perfect Day, The Perfect Life. And this stems from a conversation that Cassie and I had. Uh, it was probably 15 years ago. And it was in a Chick-fil-A in Mansfield, Texas, just a few miles over to the east of here. And uh, as a general manager of a well-known ministry, we sat down and had lunch together. And he asked me a question. He says, Rick, Cassie, he says, we're there. And he says, uh, I says, y'all have got, there's an anointing on your life. And God has some great things for y'all. There's no doubt. God's going to do some great things. Uh, how do you, how do you believe that you're going to get it done? And, um, I paused for about 30 seconds or so. And, uh, out of my spirit came this response. It was simple. I said, well, I'll tell you what, that's simple. What we're going to do is I'm going to do what I did today and what I'm doing today. I got up this morning really early. If anybody knows me and my lifestyle and what I do, my family, people that live with us or come and stay with us, I'll tell you, I'm a very early riser. The reason being is to develop habits over time, and then eventually my relationship with God, God will wake me up at any time, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, doesn't matter. I'm ready. I'm instant in season. I want to be available to him to talk to me whenever he wants to talk to me. I made a commitment years ago when I first started in the ministry that I would spend at least 10% of my day with God every day. 
So I focus on trying to spend at least two hours and 45 minutes a day at least with the Lord by myself. Okay? Come on. Just, just, this, is where God sh- this is what God showed me. So I, I, my reply to him was this. I said, it's really simple. I said, I got up this morning and I spent some time with God. And I asked God, what do you want me to do today? Just an open, bl- open blank page, open blank day. Nothing's in front of me. It, it can go any way that I choose for it to go in. Notice I choose for it to go in. I'm choosing right now to put myself in a position that I do every single day. God, what do you want to do today? Spend my time with him. I sang a song earlier in the first service. If you want to listen to it, go back and listen to it. Okay? But it was a song by Lionel Harris talks about I miss my time with you. And it's so important that God, you and I have got to have an intimate relationship with God that goes beyond studying a book or writing something or doing something. We've got to have, God wants a relationship with us. So I wake up, I woke up this morning. That's what I told the guy. I said, I woke up this morning. I spent my time with God. I said, I had my Bible open. I prayed in the spirit. I had a journal with me. And if God wanted to tell me anything, he was going to tell me something. And then I walk, I'm walking out my day the way I believe that God wants me to walk it out. And so, you know what? I'm going to do that. And by the end of the day, I will have done everything that God wants me to do. And you know what I'll do? Tomorrow morning, I'm going to wake up. And I'm going to spend some quality time with God. And I'm going, to, I'm going to envelop myself in whatever it is that he's asking me to do. I'm going to have my Bible. I'm going to, have, I'm going to pray in the Spirit. I'm going to have my notepad. I'm going to do whatever he wants me to do. You know what? And I'll do everything that he tells me to do that day. And you know what? Then I'll get up the next day. Y'all get where this is going. And I said, when I've, if I've done everything that God wants me to do every single day of my life, when it's all said and done, I've done everything God wants me to do. And I will be able to stand before my father and he'll say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. To sum up a couple of things that I talked about in the, in the first service, I talked about a real important part about seek ye first the kingdom of God. Not everything else, not what everybody's telling you to do. I talked about one of the titles in the book is called The Main Things, Keep the Main Thing, The Main Thing, and The Main Thing is Your Relationship with God. And I had a pastor, a minister, a mentor of mine who's now in his mid-90s who taught at the university for, I guess, uh, 30, 30 something years. Amazing man, but he had pastored already for 20 something years. So he was well-rounded. He pastored a church for 20 years and it was back in the eighties. Had a, we had a gym. Uh, it was probably three, three, three times bigger than this church at the time. Wonderful man of God. But he, he, he spoke that into me as a young ministerial student at a university. And he says, the main things that keep the main thing, the main thing, and the main things, your relationship with God. He says, it's not how many books you write. It's not how many sermons you preach. It's not how many people you get saved, set free. It doesn't matter. Uh, that, that's, you know what? Praise God for all that stuff. But the reality of it all, if it isn't what God's telling you to do, He'll look at you and say, well, I never knew you. You weren't doing what I, you, you know, because you have the power and the authority as a human being on this earth to control the situations that are in, in hand. He's given that to us. Right? But the reality of you fulfilling the assignments that God has for you has to be enveloped around what is God telling you to do right now in your life today. And if you'll do that every single day of your life, when it's all said and done, you've done everything that God wants you to do. Okay, so that's just a little nugget about what I ministered this morning, and there's some more things in there. But if you want to go back, go back and listen to it. I'm, we're putting this in a book, and just I'm excited about it. But I know this is the reason I started writing it. A few years ago, I was ministering to a young man, and uh, well, I was I minister. We minister to a lot of young adults, and you know, and people. Period. And I found myself having the same conversation with people all the time, and I was like. And it dawned on me, I'm sitting there and I, ju- I had just finished ministering to one guy who's got an amazing calling on his life and another guy, can I ask you some questions? And he's asking me almost the exact same questions that this guy's asking me. And I'm telling him the exact same things that I'm telling this guy. I'm going, okay, I'm not rocket science. Not this, this. And here's the reality of it is, it's the simple things that confound the wise. It's the simple, it's the simple things that confound the wise. If you're looking for some trick of the trade to get where you're trying to go with God, you're, you're, you're not going to get there. There are no quick fixes when it comes to God. He wants you hold, healed, set free, and delivered, and going in a direction that's a victory. Amen? Amen. So you, you got to make that determination. So the Lord, he quickened me that day, and he says, I need you to write a book on this. 
And so over the last year and a half, I've been spending time when we go on vacations and when I feel led to, when I've got a little time to stop and think, then I spend time writing on that book. And I've written it. I've actually preached a couple of messages out of it already uh, at different places. And, and, but it's, it's in me. It's not something that, and it's growing bigger in me. It's, it, it's, not, it's almost like a checklist for me, for my personal, well, what I'm doing in ministry. There's certain things that you just can't stop doing. And, and that right there is huge. That time with the Lord is huge. Because everybody can tell you, especially if there's a different, if you've got the abilities to do a lot of different things, people will pull on you. Yeah. Old pastor used to tell me, Rick, there's a lot of things you can do. I can, I've done a lot of things in my life. And when it comes to ministry, I mean, you'd be surprised. I, it shocks some people, some of the things that you do. And so when you grow up in ministry, that's your life. You, you'd be shocked. Come on, you know? And so, but it's only because you make yourself, you become all things for all men for the gospel's sake. All right. And so, but the reality of it is when people see those gifts and annoyance, they want to take them and use them for themselves. You better. And I had, I had an old pastor, a pastor of mine, uh, Monty Price. He'd tell me, he says, Rick, there's a lot of things you can do, but you better hear what it is God's telling you to do because everybody else will have you doing what they want you to do. Come on. And I was like, that helped me. He says, you can lead worship. You can do children. You can, you've done it all, Rick. He says, you can do this. He says, you better know what it is God. And you know what God's told me to do? He's told me to do right here. I serve the Savelles for the rest of my life. From here, I will fulfill all the other assignments that God has for me on the face of the earth. Okay? And I've got confidence in that. So all the dreams that he's ever placed on the inside of me, they're going to come to pass. And they're going to come to pass from right here. Okay? And so there's more of that in the first session. So y'all need to go back and listen to it. Let's get into this session, which is, man, the perfect day, the perfect life. And so Deuteronomy 30, 14 through 15, let's read that together. Oh, you don't have to read it out loud. I'm going to read this. Uh, the word of God is very nigh unto thee and in thy mouth and in thy heart that thou mayest do it. See, I have set before thee this day. Say this day. This day. What is that scripture today? This is the day the Lord has made. What? I will rejoice and be glad. This day. So today is your day. Say today is my day. Today is my, today is my God day. Today is my God. Boy, you better start expecting a miracle. Amen. Okay. All right. This day, life. And good. So you can take every single day. You have a choice to make. I'm either, I've got a choice to do what I want to do or what God wants me to do. Come on. Come on. Do what you, do what God wants you to do. Amen. You've got to do what God wants you to do. It's a choice. The perfect day is a choice. And so is a perfect life. But you can't have the perfect life without choosing today, this day. Okay, so, and then 19, go down there. I call heaven and earth. So all heaven and earth is watching you every single day of your life, Chris. Every time you wake up, they're they're watching. The angels are, are is he going to get ready today? Is he he really ready? Is it devil booty kicking time today? Come on, we're ready. What do you want to just do today? Come on. Angels are waiting. They're all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for us who are heirs unto salvation. But they're waiting to see if you and I are going to boot up, scoot up, and get ready to do what God's called us to do. Amen? Come on, you and I, we got to be ready. We got to get ready. It's a real war out here, amen? You got to come at it like that, okay? So you got to do this. So all of heaven and earth, this day that I have set before you, there it is, life and death. Your way or God's way? Because the Bible says the carnal mind, you, your way is death. And it's the enemy against God. All right? But you, you know, so spirit, we're going to be led by the spirit of God, Amen? That lives within us, right? So it's a choice still. It says blessing or cursing. Therefore, and he gives us a hint. Yo, yo, yo. Listen, guys, choose life. Isn't this good? Okay, so we got a choice here that you, not only are you affecting you, but you're affecting your seed. And I shared a little bit in the first service about some of the seed. My parents, I'm blessed. I have great parents and they poured the word into me all the time. So they, even when I didn't like it or didn't want it, you know what I'm saying? But they were constantly pointing me in the direction of what the word of God had to say about my situation. It's really good. So what happens is you create an inheritance for your children's children to a thousand generations. So what you're doing today is not just affecting you, but it's affecting eternity. Yes. Glory to God. Amen. Isn't that good? Okay. So that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, <clears throat> that thou mayest obey his voice and that thou mayest cleave unto him. So what is that? That's intimacy, right? That, that's not just hang out with Jesus today. You know, come on. No, that is like, I, know, he, I love him. He loves me. You know, it's kind of like you get that stargaze into your wife's eyes. Mm-hmm. Glory to God. You know, it's like that, that love that you're just, oh, you want to be so enamored with God all the time. Yes. You, you, you recognize that, hey, every day 
I have the opportunity for God to be right in the middle of everything that I'm doing. God is with me. And if God be with me, who can be against me? But if he's not, if I'm choosing over here. Oh, my goodness. Look out now. Woo, Ooh, wow, come on. I'm trying to figure out how you're going to live. That ain't, you ain't. You don't die. The wages of sin, missing the mark, is death. When you start doing your own thing, don't be blaming God. Come on. I don't know why God put this. No, you put yourself in this situation by choosing that other direction today. Come on. It's your choice. If it's going to be, what? That's right. All right. So, that thou mayest dwell in a land which God's, God wants to bless you. Okay? I'll get that. All right. Look at this. Here's the thing about it. It's a daily thing. Say it's a daily thing. So, you don't get points for what you did yesterday. Come on. Just a reality. It's a brand new day. Yesterday's gone. So come on. Now. Now. Now faith is, right? Now faith is. Look at some scriptures to confirm this. Okay. Look at uh, Luke 9, 23. Luke 9, 23. Hmm. This is good. Glory to God. He says, and he said to them all. That, would that mean you... That, would that mean, come on, Dan, all of us means all of us, right? That does not exclude anybody, right? Come on. That's right, right? He, if any man, say I'm a man or a woman, or if you're a woman, say you're a woman, okay? All right? If any, seriously, look at this. Will come after me, let him deny himself. Self, over here, what you want to do today. Why does him feel like doing that? Well, you're just going to walk in a direction that you don't really want to walk in. You're choosing death whether you realize it or not. But if you choose life, it gets better and better and better and gooder and gooder and gooder. Amen? Dr. Savell says it. I can say that. It's a word. Gooder is a word. Okay? So it gets gooder. Okay? So it gets gooder when you choose life on a consistent basis. But the thing you have to do is you have to deny yourself. You have to choose to be Galatians 2.20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me and the life. Is it true though? Don't just quote that scripture. Is that really taking place in your life? Are you crucifying the flesh? Come on. With all this natural deeds. You know, you've got to choose life over here. And you've got to deny yourself daily. It's a daily. You wake up every day. You and the Holy Ghost in you wakes up every day. You're going to have to choose which one you're going to go with today. That's right. Come on. You're a spirit and you live in a body. And that body talks to you. Come on. It does. You better put, the, that's why, submit yourself to God, resist the devil and your flesh. You're going to get that flesh out the way. When you submit yourself to God, you put your flesh under. Does that make sense? Do the Heisman. You know what I'm saying? It's big to be up for the Heisman Trophy. Why don't you just go ahead. You know, get your flesh. Put your, do what you need to do to get yourself out the way. Amen? Seriously. I, I was my worst enemy at times in my life. Seriously. Come on. Don't, don't look at me like you ain't never been there. Because the reality of it is is. You can be your words. Stop. Just say, you know what? That's it. It's over with. I'm not doing that anymore. Draw a line of sand. Step over. And stay there. And then choose tomorrow to stay there again. And then choose tomorrow to stay there again. You're going to have to wake up the next day and do it again. You're going to have to wake up the next day and do it. You do not get points for what you scored yesterday. You just don't get them. Today's a brand new day. Well, that's why Paul, what are you saying? Paul chapter, uh, Philippians chapter three. This one thing, this one thing that I do, this one thing that I do, I am forgetting what is behind. No, no, I'm not measuring. You know what? Paul had done it all. Seriously. He had studied under the best. He was educated. He was a warrior. He had taken a lot. I mean, he under, he was up there, buddy. And he said, this one thing I do, not only that, he had done some great things for the kingdom of God, but he was still saying this one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind and I'm pressing, reaching forth unto those things that are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. How, what do you say? Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. This is the day the Lord, this is the day, this is the, this is the day right here. And we have to choose and make that choice. And we got to forget about yesterday. Nobody wants to be here about yesterday. Just be real with you. Come on now. We want to see what God's doing in your life today. I just, I determined when I was young, I was like, 
And you hear all them old fogies? None, there's none in there, right? Okay, so I get up and say, well, if I were your age, this is what I'd do. Well, why didn't you do it? <laughs> that was my response. I was like, I don't want to be like you. Why would I want to be like you? Why are you talking to me? I'm not saying that. I mean, that was, I'm like, why am I listening to him? You know, I wanted to, I, I did not want to. So at, at my, I'm like, man, when I'm 80, I want to be as strong as I was the day I was 40. Give me this mount. What's next? Come on. You want some of this? I want to be like that where my walk is with the Lord. What's next? God, I'm ready to start. I love spending some time. Dr. Recky was here last couple of weeks ago and we spent some fun time with him. And man, he's 79 years old. If you're, was anybody in that conference listening? Man, he does not stop. You know, he was in a boat situation just like last year. So at 78, he's on his sun, his, his sun cell. I mean, so it's got, a, it's got a pretty good size mass. And he's out there and he's selling it to one seater. So he's out there. He's getting it done. He tops that thing in the freezing cold. After already being out there for two hours. So and then he swims with his boat to the shore another two hours. He sees the guy. This is 78. Come on now. Come on. Don't you want to hang around somebody like that? Come on, right? Give me some of that. Right, rub that some on me. Come on, someone touch me. You know, you want, what is that? That is someone that has chosen daily, daily, daily to continue to press toward the mark for the prize. He's not, he was one of the top CEOs in the country for 10 years running. And he's been in ministry now for 30 years. He was in the corporate world for 50 years. Can you just imagine what God's done through his life? So, but what, he's not stopping. He says, he talk, I talked to him on the phone the other day. He's like, He's like, come on, Rick, we got to come up to the next. We got to go somewhere. Come on. I, you know, we got to get this done. I'm just turning 80. I'm just starting my ministry. Come on. <laughs> he took a Moses. Come on. That's got to be your intent where the promise is. You can't stop. It's the ones that keep winning are the ones that keep doing what it is that they did to win to begin with. Every day is a choice. Every day is a choice. Where are we? Okay, I didn't get through Luke. All right, 9, 23. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily. Does everybody say, does that say that in your Bible? Does it say daily? Are you sure? Daily? Okay. Just making sure we're on the same page. And follow who? Follow him. You're following God, not yourself. Not what you want to do. You're not running after your own dreams. You're running after God. You need to go back and listen to the first session because when you're running after your dreams, you're running away from God. Because God promises you, you run after him, he'll fulfill all your dreams. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. All these other things will be added unto you. Delight yourself in him, not in your dreams. Come on. That's the word of God. Delight yourself in the Lord. He'll give you the desires. He will fulfill the dreams that are in your life. Ooh, glory to God. Okay. Crucified with Christ, Philippians, Matthew 6, 34. 33 and 34. Praise God for the word. Amen. The word will not return void. It'll do what it's set out to do. I'm so grateful. My parents, man, the word, the word, the word, the word. They always tell me when I was a kid, you know what? If it's in the word, you can have it. I'm thankful for them. Grew up Baptist and... I just think that my parents were not afraid to say, if it's in the word, you can have it. I had a, I had a spirit-filled grandpa. Popo. Boy, he was spirit-filled, tongue tongue, played that harmonica like nobody's business. Loved it, man. You know, if anybody in that family ever got sick, you know who they went to? The spirit-filled, Holy Ghost, tongue talking grandpa. Amen? Why? Because he had the anointing of God on his life. Don't limit God what God can do. Amen? He laid them big hands on people. Holy. Matthew six thirty three. are you there? All right, so, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. And now that sounds, that sounds so easy, right? Then why don't we do it? Wake up in the morning, what's Facebook? Oh, did my team win last night? Oh, come on. All right. Come on. Seriously? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Hey, God, good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Ricky. Come on. You can put yourself in there. Relationship. It's all about your relationship. He desires. If you're looking for a relationship, that relationship first has to be in him before you can ever experience in somebody else. If it's going to have a lasting through eternity relationship. You can't. I'm huge. All right. So um, 
Seek ye first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And one translation says, his way of doing things and being right. Now, take therefore no thought. This is what I want to get to. Take no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Read that again. Take therefore no thought, because now, well, see, we've crucified yesterday, but you know what? Everybody wants to, well, maybe tomorrow I'm going to get this. Expect your miracle today. Yeah. Why not now? Yeah. Now faith is, yeah. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, now faith today, today is your day for a miracle. Expect your miracle today. Why wait till tomorrow? What are you doing today? If you keep waiting on tomorrow, tomorrow will never come. Tomorrow, tomorrow. It's always the day away. Okay? It never comes. Come on. No. We want it now, right? Yeah, that's good. I remember my uh, little cousin. She wanted her manifestation now and she got it. You know why? Her mom was like, well, you know, God answers sometimes. God. No. She said, no, Pastor. Well, she didn't call me Pastor. Uh, cousin Rick says this and this is what it says. And I'm, I want it now and I'm getting it. Yeah. You know what? She got it. Amen. Come on. Why? Because God is in the now. Cassie has a, a, a wristwatch that says, now. That's what it says. That's be good for you to try to figure out, when are you going to do this, God? Come on, Ergo, God, where are we? Come on, hello, Jesus, come on. Come on, now, 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 now. Right? Now, faith is. That's right. So, he says, so, but see, don't look at tomorrow. You're thinking, let's go to another scripture. Oh, my goodness, this is so good. Maybe in my other, there's a scripture here. And I'm looking for real quick. Come on, Jesus. I'm not go that far. All right. I don't know where it is exactly. That's okay. I don't need to go there. And so sufficient is the, is the evil there of today. So look at your today. Figure out what today is. Learn how to conquer today. Whatever's in front of you today, if you don't figure it out today, you're going to see it tomorrow anyway. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's the reality of it all. If you, my mom used to tell me, he, she'd tell me this. This helped me. This helped me big time. And dealing with people, Dealing with situations, she'd look at me and she'd say, son, do you not like what you're seeing? I don't like it at all, mama. She says, well, learn how to handle it so you don't have to see it again. Because yeah. the devil don't play fair. He knows what you don't like, and he's going to keep throwing it at you until you learn. Look at it like, mm, get out of here. Go on over here. Come on. You got to get to that point in your life where nothing moves you anymore. You're not moved. Jesus said the spirit that was on him, that's on you and me, is not, does not judge after the sight of its eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of its ears. Come on. Right judgment right here. If God said it, that settles it. Whether you believe it or not, it'll settle it for your life. And you'll just trust that it'll do that. Go to James chapter 4. Say praise God for the word. <laughs> Y'all having fun? That's, that may be the next thing I talk about here in a second. Having fun. It's not fun when you're losing. Come on. Is that right? How many of y'all turn that TV off when your team's down by 30? Yeah. <laughs> Why? Because it's not fun watching them get whooped like that, right? It's not fun through going through life and getting beat all the time. And there's sometimes you don't want to get, you know, learn how to win the day. And here's the thing about it. Winning doesn't necessarily mean that you accomplish everything that you want to accomplish. Focus in on whatever God's telling you to do today. Come on. This is where that next scripture was. Boom, shakalaka. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, look at this. <clears throat> the everything, there's a time and a season for everything under the sun, right? So it wasn't time for that scripture yet. It's right here. All right, so we've got two scriptures to look at, but I'm going to read this one, verse 13, James chapter 4. It goes along with what we just read over there in Matthew, okay, about talking about tomorrow. It says, go to now, you that say today or tomorrow, we will go into such a city and continue there and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas you know what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanishes away. For that you ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now you rejoice in your boastings, what you're going to do. Come on. All such rejoicing is evil. So when you start chasing after your own thing, doing what, trying to accomplish all of your dreams, trying to do everything the way you need to get things done. And when you, that's disappears, gone, see ya. That's evil. You're missing the mark. 
But when you run after God, all these things are going to be added unto you. Your focus, here, let's go back up a few scriptures here. In uh, verse 7. Hold on, let's go to 6. But he giveth more. Somebody say, how many of y'all like more? You know, my, my wife was talking about cereal earlier. Made me think about, you ever eat cereal? You, you always keep the box beside you, right? <laughs> Why? Because and when you get the milk to the end, you got to just add a little bit more cereal, right? A little, you just like, the, everybody, everybody raise your hand if you've done that before. That's what you, that's the enjoyment of eating cereal, right? It's just, it's not good if the box runs out, okay? So, but the reality of it is, we like to have the more. I mean, if they gave you an option on two different vehicles and one had the more and it had the same price, which one would you take? The more, <laughs> right, okay. All right, so, but he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but he giveth grace unto the humble. What? Humility is a prerequisite for the manifestation of anything that comes from God. Because it's coming from God, not from your own ability to get it done. The, see, the person, this person's over here saying, I'm going to do it my way. There's an old song like that. Don't do it your way. Do it God's way. And everything that you want in your life will be added unto you. All right? So you've got to, we got to choose. I'm going to submit myself to God. When I choose to walk in humility, I'm complying myself with what God wants to do in my life rather than what anything else is going on in this world around me or that my flesh wants to do naturally. Come on. So I comply myself. I submit myself to God. I resist the devil and his tendencies. Anything that has to do contrary to what God's trying to tell me, I get it out of the way, even if it's my flesh. I'm crucified with Christ, right? So you're kicking it out of the way. You say, no, no, I choose life. So I'm going to submit myself to God, resist the devil in his ways, and I'm going to do things my, God's way. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil. He will flee, flee from you. Draw near to God, and God will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. So it's like there was my, one of my favorite poems is, is I brought my broken dreams to God. Okay, and it says, this is what it says. I brought my broken dreams to God because he was my friend. But instead of leaving him in peace to work alone, I stuck around and tried to help with ways that were my own. At last, I snatched him back and cried, how can you be so slow? He said, my child, what could I do? You never let them go. God is, God, God, God's, Faithful. He is the faithful God. And if he said he'll do it, we've got to let him do it. If we keep trying to do it our own way and the way we think it needs to be done, we're going to fail tremendously. You might not fail out here in the natural, but anything that sows to the, he who sows to the flesh shall let the flesh reap corruption. The carnal mind is the enemy against God. Come on. The wages of sin is death. So there's some things that you're doing there that can cause death in your life. You got to, Heisman, get it out of here. Whew, get it down. Seriously? No. It's a choice, right? It's a choice. It's a choice, right? Choice. You know, some of y'all need to do insanity. They got that going on. You're, you're doing, yeah, here we go. But you got to make a choice here to say no to the ways of the world. You got to, to your flesh. Do it God's way, not my way. Amen? <laughs> My wife. <laughs> well, go to James chapter 1. We're going to enter into the next phase of this. Y'all enjoying this? Yes. Okay, so remember, the main things keep the main thing, the main thing. The perfect day, the perfect life starts with the choice of what that day looks like. It's a choice. You've got to have your relationship with God cultivated on an everyday basis, not just on a one-time basis. Okay? And so you've got to learn how to forget what is behind and not... Look too far ahead either. Focus on today. You know, it's so important. You know, I, I use this illustration. I've used it before, but it's so important and it bears witness because, you know, I would tell my players, I had the privilege of coaching, a, a, actually had the privilege of training a kid that has a national high school record for most threes and the, the Texas high school record for most threes in a single season. The kid could shoot. One of the things, even as a freshman, he could shoot. I, I, I said, it's mind over matter. I taught him, he was shooting 10 feet behind the three-point line as a freshman in high school. Kick and light it up. I said, it's all mental. Everything's mental. You got to get that out of your mind. Just quit thinking that so, you're that far back. Use your, t- trust the process. He can still, if he walks into a gym today, he can still shoot because he learned how to shoot right. 
But I always told my good shooters, I said, you've got to stop thinking about the one you made or the one you missed because there's always another shot to be shot. If you're so down on what you did wrong, then you'll never be up enough to shoot one right. And if you're so excited about the one you shot right, you're not going to be ready for the next one that you need to shoot because you're celebrating that one. So don't just get focused. We did it today. You know what? Tomorrow you're going to sleep. You got another day to wake up to. Now here's the deal. If you want the perfect life. Now, if you're riding a roller coaster, some days good, some days, some days a diamond. Remember that old No, maybe not. Okay. So you, you go through this roller coaster. Stop it. Just keep going. Go from faith to faith, from glory to glory. Keep allowing God. Because see, what happens is when you do this, the person that you started out to be isn't the same person that you were way down there. Every day you get better. I get, you know, I can't change everything about me, but I can't change something about me today. If I'll focus in on what God's trying to tell me today, stop doing this, or let's do this. Then I'll just do what he tells me to do. The next thing I know, he's preparing me for what he has in store for me later on in the future. Now, if I try to go get the future, then I'm in trouble because I'm not ready for it yet. But if I'll focus in on today and don't get caught up in yesterday, well, I just didn't do that good yesterday. Goodness gracious, I lost my cool. Stop. <laughs> I'll give you an illustration I gave the first service. Man, when I was in college, I love my parents. My parents sold so much word into me. It was so good growing up. And so my mom gave me these little, when I went to college, and my mom was one of those moms every day. Did you read your Bible today? Did you read your Bible today? Especially if I was having a bad day. Have you spent any time with God today? You know, I, just, just being real, my mom was one of those kind of moms. And you know what? Praise God for my mom. And so when I got to college, my mom uh, figured out a way that she's going to get the word into me every day somehow, some way, Right? Even if she's not with me. So she gave me these little bitty boxes. Have you ever had those boxes that have verses in them? Promise it, they were called promise boxes. And you had a bunch of promises on the inside of them. So um, she said, hey, babe, just do this for me. Okay, look, I know you might not get up early and do your little quiet time and all that stuff. But at least take a verse with you a day. You know, there's times where I hit that, right, run into class, I'll grab a verse. I'll look at it sometime. I'm going to grab it sometime. <laughs> Earlier I talked about, I'd be getting ready to go to the honky tonk. Verse, I did not get a verse. Because I knew that day was going to be over with by the time I got back to the dorm that night. Come on. So I grabbed that verse on the way to wherever I was going. Okay. All right. So, but here's the deal. Did I, was I doing everything perfect along the way? No. But what was happening? The word of God was being so to me. The word of God will not return void. It'll do what it set out to do. Keep allowing the word of God to come into you. The word of God will change you. And so the same with those words, next thing I know, I'm memorizing all those because I can go, you can only go through one box. <laughs> I'm there for four years. I went through a lot of, a lot of the same scriptures over and over and over again. Right. What is it doing? That word of God, the incorruptible seeds been sowing into me on a regular basis and it's developing something on the inside of me. I didn't want to see it at the moment in time, but because I was doing a little something every day to put myself in a position for God to do something through me when it came time for me to start doing what it was God's called me to do. And I was ready to start making that choice on an everyday basis. I was more prepared than I thought I was. Come on. And so you got to see this. It's a daily process. Don't think I got to be like this person. or I need to have this type of relationship. All right, here's my deal. At, and when I went into the ministry, I determined I'm going to spend at least two hours and 45 minutes a day with the Lord by myself. That's a choice that I made because as a minister, I thought I need to tithe 10% of my, I still spend that much time or more with God by myself. My family will tell you, I'm up before anybody else gets up in that house. I'm stay, so I don't matter what time of the night, I'm going to get up and I'm going to spend my time with God. And on my days off, I may get up, spend my time with God and go right back to bed. But I started my day off right. And if God wants me to, I'll stay up that whole day. No big deal. My wife. It's just a reality. What is it doing? I'm changing day by day, day by day. I'm not, the same. I'm not the same person that I used to be, though it's been slow going. There's a knowing that someday perfect I will be. Because what we're, we're being transformed from glory to glory. It eventually will be everything that God's created us to be. But if I'm trying to go just do what, God, what I think God wants me to do, then I'm not going to get there. I've got to focus in on today. Well, you know what? You can start to, right now at this moment. You know what? Today, the rest of this day, what can I, what God, what do you want me to do today? Not, not, not what do I want to do or where do I want to go or how do I, you know, come on. Just submit yourself to God. Resist the devil, the ways of the world and say, God, what do you want me doing today? 
and just go after it. Amen. And you'll wake up the next morning and go, God, what do you got for me today? What are you thinking about, Lord? What's on your heart, Lord? Just take your pen, your Bible. It doesn't have to be a whole, whole long time. It took me a while to get to where I was. And it took me a discipline of doing it on a regular basis before it became a supernatural habit. So I don't even use an alarm clock. My wife will tell you that. I haven't used one for 17 years now. And whatever. I can just say, God, can you wake me up at this time? I need to get up. Like, look up, and there's the same time that I asked for. Glory to God. What does it do? The main thing is to keep the main thing, the main thing, and the main thing is your relationship with God. My relationship with God went from verse boxes one day, you know, the one, one day, one day, what is it, one day vitamins? What is that called? You know, more than just a supplement, right? It came to a lifestyle. And it get, it's going to hopefully, my, my goal is every day to get better, to get better, to get better. And when it's all said and done, if I'll do everything that God's telling me to do every single day, by the time it's all said and done, I will have done everything that God wants me to do in my life. And he'll look at me and say, well done, now, good and faithful servant. Because I, I love this illustration. Brother Copeland said this one time, and it marked me because I think sometimes in ministry and what we do and what we believe we're supposed to do and what everybody looks at something that you're doing is that you feel like you have to be up here preaching. Or have a, you know, a podcast or have this or have that or write a book or do this. So here we go. And I, I'm like, you know what? The thing that you have to do is do whatever it is God's telling you to do. And he used illustration. Brother Copeland gave him this illustration. He says, you know what? The Lord told him one time when he was holding Brother or Robert's coat under the tent, he said, if I called you to do that for the rest of your life, you would be doing exactly what I want you to do. And you would receive every reward that's going through or Roberts and anything that has to do with this ministry forever. Because you're faithful to do what it is I'm telling you to do. Of course, we all know that's not where God kept him. But you have to have that kind of heart. You have to be willing to say, God, I'm some, oh, God what, what do you want today? Are you willing to change your schedule? Are you willing to just say, hey, God, hey, yeah, yeah. Can you go over so-and-so's and just do this for them? Can you do this? Can you do that? Can you? Okay, God, here I am. Send me. All right? <laughs> Forgetting what is behind and reaching forth into what is ahead. What is before? It takes times like little buddy Timon says. You got to put your behind in your past. You remember that? Yeah. Akuna Matata, right? Yeah, right? Okay. You have to do that, right? All right, I'm going to just share one little nugget for you. I'm not going to preach the whole next part, but I want to give you what I am doing is the next two times that I preach in January, uh, the first week in January, I'm going to continue where we're kind of leaving off today, but if that's what the Lord, I'm subject to the spirit of the Lord. So if he says, Hey, let's do something different. We'll do it. But this is what he's told me as of this point in time, I'm going to give you an introduction of what I believe I'll preach in January. And, uh, it's the title of the chapter is have fun. It's your, it's your life. Have fun. Okay. And, and the reason this comes out of a relationship comes out of my relationship with the Lord, right? You see here, what, what, what Leroy can't, Leroy can't taught me over 30 something years ago when he said the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing and the main thing is your relationship with God when he spoke that man it, it, you can tell it's in me I got okay I got to just make sure I'm cultivating that all the time and he says he says not how many books you write not how many it's not all that stuff he says that's the thing well so one morning it was uh <laughs> Gabriella was just a baby so and I will tell you, some of y'all remember her when she was that small, when she was born. Cassie was actually on the platform, like she jumps around right here. She was pregnant until the last two weeks of your pregnancy, wasn't it? And she was jumping around like that with Gabriella. So if you want to know why Gabriella jumps around like that you know, on Sunday morning, you'll know that that's because her mom was doing that right up to the time she was born, okay? And so the reality of it is she was born, and um, this is really cool because talk about the, because sometimes in your life you're trying to, God, am I doing the right things, okay? So it's 2.30 in the morning. We're, we have, we're living in Waxhatchee at the time. We traveled back and forth for years. And uh, during that time, Cassie was leading worship, and I was doing similar to what I'm doing now, but I was doing it for Dr. Savelle and then working in the evangelism area. And so in light of that, 2.30 in the morning, it's my turn to go get the bottle because Gabriella is a baby. So I jump up, and I go, and I take one step on our steps, and I, boom, I slip. Bam, boom, boom. Hit the wall, man, down here on the bottom. We have guests. We had a guest, guest room underneath us. They come running out. What's happening? Cassie's at the top. Of, Are you okay? This is at 2.30 in the morning. I started laughing. I said, yeah, I'm, I got carpet burned. You know what? I pulled that carpet up. 
Come on. <laughs> and it me, I was like, getting rid of that sucker. And so, but, uh, but uh, I, I, I got down there and um, I said, I'm fine. I'm giggling about it. I'm laughing. And I'm walking to the refrigerator. And on my way to the refrigerator, I open the door. And as I open the door, the Spirit of the Lord said something to me. He said, your hilarious attitude brings victorious energy, which brings favor unending in your life. Never. I thought, that's cool. And he starts saying it to me. Your hilarious attitude brings victorious energy, which brings favor unending never in your life. And he kept saying this to me. I'm taking the bottle up. Of course, you got to warm it up, you know, make sure it's for the baby before, you know, so I got all that. But he's talking. And all of a sudden, the anointing starts getting thick. And I'm going, I go up to, I get, I get Gabriella situated and everything else. And I'm in our bed. And I'm like, dude, God, this is like heavy in here. Cash is over there. So we're sitting over there. <laughs> I'm just kidding. She wasn't. I don't know. Maybe she wasn't. No, no, it's all good. Okay. But we're sitting there and the God is in the room. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> oh, thank you. Okay. All right. So we've all been there, right? Come on. <laughs> hey, you got a toddler? That's toddler time. You know? Yeah. Okay. So um, there we are in the process of this. And, uh, the, and he keeps saying this. And I'm like, wow, that's cool. And uh, I'm falling asleep. And I go, what would you say again? And he says it to me again. I think, you know what? I'm not stupid. Get up, Rick. And so <laughs> it's about 3.15 by this time, you know. I go downstairs and I get on our, you know, because our guest was usually my office, but with our people being in our guest room. I was in, so I got to our kitchen table and I got my Bible out, got everything out, set it down on the table. And I was like, okay, I started writing this out. Hilarious attitude brings victorious energy, which brings favor unending never. And I look at it and I'm like, wait a second. Hilarious starts with an H. Attitude starts with an A. Victory stands starts with a V. Ever starts with an E. Favor starts with an F, right? Unending starts with a U. Never starts with an He said, yeah, have fun. It's your time. And I went, wow. He said, your hilarious attitude. And I say that because the reality of even if I choose this day that God's called me, it doesn't say that I'm not going to have obstacles that come my way, that there's not going to be opportunities for me to go, what? God, where are you? No, the devil's a punk. You know, the reality of it is. But it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, there is no temptation trial that the devil brings my way that God has not already provided a way out for. And if I know that I can win in this situation, get excited. That's why he says in James chapter 1, consider it pure joy, my brethren, when you face trials of many kinds. For the testing of your faith develops patience. Patience develops perseverance. When perseverance is complete, it'll make you complete and perfect entire wanting nothing. You win! I was like, ah! I saw a guy sign, and it's my time to do this. What's even cooler is about a month later, I was sitting over here, right there where I'm sitting right now, Dr. Phil's right, well, he was actually preaching. And so, and usually I would do the altar, kind of like we were just ministering just a minute ago. He would say, come up and wrap it up, Rick, and we're going to, you know. He goes, he's up here, and he goes, looks at me, and he says, Rick. And I'm thinking, come on up. He says, No. And he says, you know what he tells me? He says, your joyful attitude is about to bring promotion beyond your highest expectations, dreams, or desires. He said, the Lord just told me to tell you that. Isn't that cool? What was that? Because here's that word. Because, you you know, you, you want to make sure you're going to get up and preach something. It's going to be what God's told you to say. You know what I mean? And for him to say that to me, oh, it was just a confirmation. This is it. But it's not, but, and I, we preach that, man. And when people, you get a hold of this, I'm going to be preaching this, the fullness of it in January, the first part of it. And you get a hold of this, ha <laughs> you'll laugh at the devil out loud, ha ha, and get excited about it because you realize that you've already, if, if, if he's knocking at your door like that, you've already got the victory. He's just scared. Yeah. You just need to get your laugh on because that's part of joy. You. And you know what's so fun? Because my grandfather's name was Hilario. Hilarious. You're hilarious, isn't that fun? The one that was spirit, spirit filled Holy Ghost guy. Hilario. So a good another good friend of mine calls me the hilarious healer. I, I wrote I wrote Team Rope and he calls me the hilarious healer. So and that's because there's healing in the presence of God. The Bible says when when there's joy, you know, there's joy, the fullness of joy. 
you know, there's healing. And so it's exciting. So are you excited? Did you enjoy it this morning? Amen. Pastor Cassie's going to come up and do the offer. Holy. Oh,